know, by the grace of Srila Prabhupada, we got the Bhagavad Gita as it is. And a few days ago, I had the honor to listen to of one of my daughters giving a class on Bhagavad Gita in the United States. Her name is Tulsi Gabbard. She's my daughter because she's daughter of my godbrother. And she's a very, very wonderful person. And she's a, uh, she's a, a diputado. She's a Congress member of the Democratic Party in the US, a very well-known politician. And to my surprise, she was giving a class on the Bhagavad Gita. And not only that, but she was giving a class in front of all the great uh, yogis who were in there, in that place, right? The great personalities of India, they were listening to her class, which made me very proud. And without any timid, timidness, she spoke so perfectly the philosophy of Srila Prabhupada. So amazingly perfect that, wow, I was really blown away. And as I also saw with the class, I mean, such a brilliancy and coming from a high positioned member of the US government about the Bhagavad Gita and glorifying Prabhupada also. So it's, it was very, it gave me great joy to see that. And of course, that joy increases when we think that she is in a very important, she's one person who openly defies the American policy of cheating the world. Can you imagine that? This whole cheating with the war making everywhere, she openly decries it. She says, you are killing our countrymen in your politics. You have no right to do that. Because she was in military service herself, so she saw many people being killed and sent back. She feels what she says, and you can feel that she feels what she says. So it's very powerful. Who knows what is her destiny in this world? I know that her Guru Dev, Siddhaswarupananda Maharaj, he had that plan from very long back. Even he sent her to do military service because in America, if you have made military service, you immediately take me as a very high qualified person of having sacrificed for your country. In your life. And so, so he made that plan and it worked out so perfectly. She was selected uh, openly as a Hindu, openly declaring, I believe in Bhagavad Gita. When she was sworn in, she did what she rejected to be sworn in on the Bible. She said, I'll be sworn in on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. This, no? So that's what we're celebrating today. That's why I tell you about tell you about this event that the Bhagavad Gita has a very important step. Also in the Gandhi program, one person came to me and and he offered his obeisances specially to the Bhagavad Gita as it is. It was also very nice to hear some of these old Gandhi followers could understand that. Swami Prabhupada went beyond Gandhi. Gandhi in honor in his historical importance for India, but Prabhupada went beyond Gandhi. He went there where every soul should go. We shouldn't become a social welfare worker. We shouldn't become somebody who becomes a doctor and teaches and cures people in hospital. Nothing against that. We are not against that. You can be a, you can do that and also be a pure devotee at the same time. But for a pure devotee, he is not so concerned with curing people in a hospital. He wants to cure the souls from avidya, which is the greatest of all diseases, avidya. 
you may you may be so qualified in many ways in the material world. You may be a person who can make bombs and and have physicists' information of the top range, but if you cannot save your own soul, if you cannot help others, then you can consider that all that what you acquired is actually useless. You wasted your time. So we should be very careful not to waste our time. That is what we learn from Prabhupada. Tato Brahma Gigyasa. This human form of life is meant to realize your soul. Human form of life is meant to go in, into the greatest spirit of sacrifice for humanity. And do that with great joy. Hmm? We should say Bhagavad Gita, this process is happily executed. It is not uh, the process to become sad and frustrated and depressed. No. When you practice Krishna consciousness properly, then you will have no depression. You will be very uh, full of joy and enthusiasm. And I recommend that to everybody to try to practice Krishna consciousness with that enthusiasm. Because, because if you want to make others happy, you better be happy yourself. Now what is it if you're not happy? If something is wrong, then you should correct that. If you are absolutely not happy, then correct it. Everything can be corrected. Even big mistakes can be corrected if you want to correct them. Yes, why not? We have made many mistakes in life. But is there a chance to correct them? Of course there is. Krishna consciousness is all about correction. With great mercy, with the holy name helping us. It says, when you chant the Hare Krishna Ma Mantra, you counteract more offenses than you are able to commit. <laughs> Just by chanting once profoundly, repentingly, oh Krishna, what did I do? I didn't go towards you. I hesitated, I slipped, or whatever happened, but I want to go to you. I want to be with you. You're my only hope. So, if you chant like this, you don't think Krishna will say, nah, you are just a stupid old rascal, gone, gone forever into the world of illusion. That's not Krishna. That's not the father, that's not the mother. They never speak like that. And you bet that Krishna is more merciful than a mother in this world. And he's more merciful than a father. Jai Maharaj. So, it's amazing, very, very amazing that Krishna consciousness has given us this chance to read the Gita and to follow the Gita and Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Picha Tsudara Churo Vajanti Man Nyanyanyanyabak and it says even if you have committed a great, great mistake if you are steady in your consciousness to want to serve Krishna, then you should still be considered a saintly because lasting success will be yours. Because finally Krishna will adjust everything so that you will be successful. I forgot the second verse. Dharma. Uh, after Apicha Tsudarachuru Vajanti Mangalan Yabak, then the next verse is. Huh? But the whole verse. <laughs> the first one. Dharma. Somebody look it up in the Gita. Please, the Gita, we should always get it clear. That's memory. I know some people, they have the whole Bhagavad Gita memorized from childhood on, and they can recite it. I was not that fortunate. Started, Apichet Sudarachuru Bajan Dimangananyabak. Oh, yeah? 
Samyak. Okay. And then, first word. Next shloka. Chiprambhavati Dharmatma Patijani Nameva Kyaprashyati Chiprambhavati Dharmatma Memory also. So Krishna says, I promise that he will attain lasting peace because I promise that my devotee will never perish. And for that reason, Krishna promises that his devotee never perishes. Prabhupada used to give one story to properly express that why and how Krishna would never let his devotee go astray. And the example he gave was that Grandfather Bhishma, after the battle of Kurukshetra was raging, and finally the day, end of the day came and Duryodhan and Bhishma met and Duryodhan said, I know Grandfather Bhishma, you love the Pandavas, so you're not really fighting the way you could. It's because you love them, I can understand it. I mean, it's my bad luck, but I guess that's what it is. And Bhishma said, no, Duryodhana, this is not true. I will kill the Pandavas because I am with you. And here I have a secret. I have five arrows. And those five arrows are blessed to not go amiss. They will hit and kill when they're shot. You have this, and tomorrow I will kill five Pandavas with them. Duryodhana's heart was jumping. Ooh, that's good, the war. Oh, Bhishma speaks, because Bhishma does not speak in vain. It's grandfather Bhishma. So, then Duryodhana said, you know something, grandfather Bhishma? Let me keep those arrows overnight so that nothing will happen to them. I'll deliver them tomorrow to you, and then you can execute your promise as you have given to me. Vishma said, okay, Duryodhana, you think you can take better care of them as me? Take them. I know you will watch over them. So, Duryodhana goes to his tent, and in another tent, Krishna and Arjuna, they talk. And, Arj and Krishna says to Arjuna, you know something? There's a great danger approaching. And if you go now to Duryodhana, and you remind him that he owes a favor to you because you in your childhood saved his life and he offered you a boon in return, which you at that time said, maybe later. So you go and ask for this boon now. And when he says, okay, then you ask, give me the five arrows Grandfather Bhishma gave to you. So Krishna sent Arjuna into the enemy camp, which at those days was common, that in the night they could talk to each other, even though in the day they were at war. Different style than today. So, Arjuna went to Duryodhana's tent and said, Can I speak to you, dear Duryodhana? Oh, Arjuna, you've come here. What can I do for you? Come on, what's going on? And he said, You remember, Duryodhana, when we were children, you promised me a boon? Oh yes, yes Arjuna, I do remember. What is it what you want? Do you want me to stop the war and give you half of the kingdom? Is that what you want? Arjuna said, no, that's not what I want. So, what is it what you want? 
I want the five arrows Grandfather Bhishma gave to you. Two of you dances. How did he know about this? I was alone as Grandfather Bhishma. How in the world would he know this? But now he got me on the spot. And do you know in his own chivalry? So well, I have to do it. I gave my word. So he gave the five arrows to Arjuna. Arjuna took them back. And I don't remember if Arjuna or Krishna, they broke the arrows. Huh? And then they broke them. And next morning arrives. Grandfather Bhishma is coming to the battlefield, driving his chariot right next to Duryodhana and says, Okay, my dear son, the arrows. says, what happened? Where are my arrows? Duryodhana said, I lost them. What? You lost those arrows? Are you out of your mind? I made a promise and you have the arrows and now they are gone. What, what happened to the arrows? I gave them to Arjuna. What? To Arjuna? Yes, because I promised him a boon in my childhood and he came to my tent at night and asked me to fulfill that boon and then he said he wanted those arrows. Oh, this rascal Krishna. <laughs> Only Krishna could know this because he's in the heart of everyone so he knows what was going on only krishna could have told him go and get those arrows ah huh? okay krishna you want me to break my promise then i will make you also break your promise so he must said i'll kill them anyway so the war raged on that day and Bhishma was furious and he fought and fought and fought and fought and finally he got Arjuna cornered and in such a way that his chariot is, is, was broken to pieces. And Arjuna was on the ground without having his chariot. Chariot? Mm -hmm. The chariot. And Arjuna was also, Krishna was also there because he was the charioteer. So it was broken to pieces. And Arjuna. He was fearing now Bhishma is just going to kill me. And Bhishma put the arrow ready to devastate Arjuna. And Krishna saw that. He took up one of the wheels of the broken chariot. And he came running towards Bhishma and said, Now I will kill you. And Bhishma looked at him with ecstasy. Oh, Krishna, you broke your promise. You said you were not going to participate in the war. Oh, if you can break your promise, then no problem. I can break mine also. So Arjuna was saved. And at that time, the conscience was blown. The day of the battle was over. So, Kauteya Pratiyani Hiname Bhaktiya Pranashati. That is the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna promises that my devotee will never perish. And with this little story,
we end for today, but it's very early. So you can go on speaking Gita glories. I just have a little snack with Sajjai because he has to a long trip to go back to Delhi. So, Bhagavad Gita, Ki Jai. Yeah.